And this is the thing, some of them don't even act like women, they act like men. They're strong, but they're booty bandit. They're Pokemon. That's right, they get poked. They like other men in their butt. David E. Taylor has an absolutely foul mouth. It's indeed perverse. We know he runs a cult. We know he's false. Some people believe he's real, but he's false, all right? Listen, this video is indeed disturbing. I'm going to say caution because he does say some things that are perverse. And this isn't a church. This is public. You feel me? And I'm surprised no one in the church is walking out. No one is rebuking him, but everyone is just sitting there and enjoying what he's saying and they're laughing and whatnot. And this just so this just shows us that they are bewitched. All right. Take a listen to this. I've taught this before that God has created men, us men. We fall in love through our eyes, what we see presented to us that's why God brought Eve to Adam to let him see her he says when he saw her this is it he saw all those curves God put on her don't sit here and judge me God put those curves on her it wasn't me you see now he's speaking from a, a place of perversion where he's he's making it seem like okay God is in heaven and then he was like okay I'm gonna make Eve curvy and have big old a big old chest and a big old behind just so Adam can be satisfied. So he's basically saying that Adam was only interested or Adam only wanted Eve because God made her curvy and all this stuff. And that is nowhere to be found in the Bible. Now, this comes from the place of perversion of man because in a man, you know, lust, oh, curvy, oh, she got to have a big behind, oh, she got to have big this, she got to have. It all comes, obviously there's certain people that have preferences, but there is a massive amount of lust, especially with men in that area where she got to have a big old this, she got to have a big old that. You feel me? And that wasn't Adam's, it wasn't a um, uh, deal breaker. It wasn't a deal breaker. Like... I don't know why... Why everybody think men are so nasty and wicked thinking? It was God who did it. It was in his mind before it was in ours. Don't be speaking. I don't listen to all that religious crap. Y'all get used to me after a while. I'm just real. I'm just straight. Can you imagine? It wasn't Adam who decided to make a woman and put breasts, hips, none of that on her. It was God who did all that and knew what he was gonna do when he did it and knew Adam wouldn't like it. But religious people, oh, cover up your dirty pillows. That is not religious. That is called modesty, okay? Women should cover up. Men should dress modestly as well, but women should indeed cover up those pillows because whatever is under that shirt should only be seen by you and your husband that is it especially in the church it's not religious to tell a woman to be modest and say cover up the bible even says um in first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control. So don't come out here just flashing and showing it off and whatnot. <laughs> Especially if you're a double D. Put a paper bag over those dirty pillows. <laughs> no, I don't think I should have a paper bag over them like that. I should be modest. But I need to show something. This man is perverse. How can you be modest and then at the same and then at the same time say, I want to show something? Show what? You want to show off a little bit of cleavage. You want to show a little bit of something. And especially this is coming from a, a so-called man of God. 
This man is perverted. That's my presentation. Paper bag over those dirty pillows. <laughs> no, I don't think I should have a paper bag over them like that. I should be modest. But I need to show something. That's my presentation. You walk past a man and he looks at you like you, why you looking at my dirty pillows? <laughs> so whoever's been in your ear, all that stuff gonna stay in you. You're gonna treat everybody else like that. <laughs> I know I'm a mess, I'm just gonna keep doing it too. I love eating religious spirits, I love doing it. I like making religious people mad. And all you bishops, if you want to send me some on it, please do. <laughs> Come and get me. <laughs> they infeminine. They act like women. And this is the thing. Some of them don't even act like women. They act like men. They're strong, but they're booty bandit. They're Pokemon. That's right. They get poked. <laughs> they like other men in their butt. They suck penis. Oh. In in the church. Am I making it clear? Yes. And you have all those women out there. Out there. All I see right now is straight women. There's probably like 30 people probably on that screen, maybe. I'm not counting, maybe. 15, I don't know, all right? And all those women, you know what's ha happening in their mind? What's going through their mind? A man's sexual organ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So the occasion here at the church is to hear the word of God, to build up the church. David E. Teller, you are speaking to women. You have mostly women in your church. And you're talking about men taking it up the behind and doing. You shouldn't ever want to be with a man who sucks another man's penis. I mean, woman, I'm talking about the the woman that are listening to you right now. Obviously, if you, if you call yourself a Christian, obviously you don't want <laughs> you don't want to get into a relationship with a man that is you know, LGBTQ plus. But to even talk like this in the church is crazy. Sound like we got some real women in this house. All in a cult, right? Now, you got to understand, God did create women with the features that they have. You were born the way you were born, right? But the Bible even says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So once they ate the fruit, they figured out that they were naked. And then they begin to what? Cover themselves because they didn't want to expose themselves to God. So they were okay with themselves being naked to each other because they're married, but they actually tried to hide themselves. They tried to hide their nakedness from God because they came aware of, the moment they ate the fruit, they became aware of evil. So they became aware that they were naked and they had to cover themselves from their nakedness. And that's where modesty began. Modesty truly began in the fall of man in the sense of just 
becoming aware that you are naked. That's where it came from. Where you got to, the, the, the time you got to cover up is when someone else that you know is around that isn't your spouse. Yes, God is omnipresent and whatnot, but the, the real reason they covered up was because they were naked and God was walking in the cool of the day and whatnot. And, then, and God was like, who told you you were naked? You feel me? So that's perverse. Don't walk around saying, I got to show a little bit of something. You can dress in an attractive, in a, in a attractive way, but still be modest. Don't come to the church coming out here wearing tight everything, tight that, trying to be showing off all this stuff. Intentions do matter. Heart posture matters. But you got to also make sure that you are really, even if you have good intentions, you got to make sure you're still covering up both men and women. Be decent. Practice self-control. Be modest. This was absolutely disgusting. This, this man is perverted.